thanks very much for coming along to this session, um, the, uh, the launch of the offshore valuation. Um, my name is Tim Helwiglass and I'm director at Public Interest Research Centre and I've been acting as the chair for um, what is the offshore valuation group, um, uh, an informal collaboration of government and industry organisations that have come together really to answer a central question, which is what is the value of the UK's offshore renewable resource? Um, I'm afraid we uh, unfortunately don't have with us today one of the, um, uh, one of the, uh, the panellists, David Mackay, Professor David Mackay from the deck. Um, he sends his apologies. He has been uh, kept down for the busy first week of, of activities um, down in Westminster. So apologies uh, for that, but there is representation from his office um, in the audience here today. And um, if I can just introduce uh, the two speakers who will be talking with me today, um, we've got Andrew Mack from Boston Consulting Group, who've been providing the analysis for this study. And we have uh, Eddie O'Connor from Mainstream Renewable Power, who will be feeding in uh, to the, the presentation partway through. So if I can give you just a, a little overview of this. To say, to start, um, I hope uh, you've noticed at the back of the room there are copies of the report. Um, I'm just going to check that the technology works at this end. Uh, hopefully, yes, it does. Fantastic. Oh, it works on my screen. Uh, and it works on his screen. Great. <laughs> so um, you'll be able to download the report in full from this web address, offshorevaluation.org. Um, and uh, uh, as I say, there are, there are hard copies here. You'll also be able to pick up copies at... Um, uh, some of the stalls of the organizations who've been involved um, in this project. So, as I said, the, the, the study really centers around the central question of what is the value of the UK's offshore renewable resource. We have some sense of it. We, we have, uh, there, there have been pieces of work in the past that have uh, attempted to, to, to come in on, the, on this question. Um, but uh, we, we felt there was definitely room for, uh, room for looking at this further. Um, we had uh, some, some great support from Ed Miliband at the beginning of last year uh, to uh, provide early enthusiasm to this project, which caused quite a, a, a grouping in the end of, of organizations to come together to both fund and provide technical input into this study. Um, so just to, to, um, to run through the list, we've got on the, the more governmental side, uh, DEC, Scottish uh, Government, Welsh Government, and... Um, uh, the Crown Estate Energy Technologies Institute. Um, our organization, Public Interest Research Centre, is actually the odd one out here. We're a, a not-for-profit charity that have been acting as the neutral broker to co help coordinate this. And um, on, the, uh, on, on the, uh, the corporate side, as you can see, some significant players in uh, the UK's offshore um, industry today. And the, the approach that we've taken is um, we have wanted to explore five key offshore renewable technologies. This isn't to say that um, in future new, new uh, technologies won't emerge, but we have focused in on, um, on wave power, on tidal stream, on tidal range, on offshore wind with fixed foundations and offshore wind with floating foundations. These being technologies that are either in deployment now or are in very active development, and we have uh, a good level of confidence that these will be um, being deployed in a, in a significant way into the future. So taking, taking those five technologies, um, we wanted to conduct really quite a high level of analysis, um, uh, a high level analysis. Um, a number of uh, consultancies were uh, approached for this project, um, Ernst & Young, PricewaterhouseCoopers, um, Poirie. In the end, we chose to go with Boston Consulting Group as um, we felt that some of the modeling strength of some of the other uh, organizations would be a little bit premature with this question. We first need to know the basic lay of the land. We've, we don't know uh, quite what the scale and scope of, uh, of the opportunity is, and we needed to take a, a strategic approach, a high level of analysis. We'd be drawing on existing research. We'd be drawing on the expertise of the, um, of, of the group, of the, the steering board um, organizations. And um, we would need to have a common appraisal of these five technologies. If we just looked at um, reports that are on the shelf today, um, assessing the different five technologies, tend to see that um, uh, they, are, they, they are not all uh, talking about a practical resource using the same language. Some are looking at 
um, a technical resource, I'm looking at a practical resource, Andy will talk in more detail about this, but we needed to have a common approach. And so we started, if you like, from first principles in, a, in assessing all of these. It hasn't, it's gone into um, a, a measure but of detail, a common, um, uh, common baseline for assessing these. And really there are, finally to, to note here just in how, we, how we've approached this, there are four framing criteria. Those criteria are four criteria. We would be looking at long-term, so from up what to 2015. Uh, had access we would be to looking at economic value, not just the energy value and the, the the carbon savings, but actual pounds, shillings, and pence, and be able to present it in the, in the language of the Treasury. Um, but this value would be uh, from the perspective of, of the UK, and finally that it would it would include um, explicitly an exploration of electricity exports to Europe at scale. And I think it's that, uh, it's that final one that um, has really uh, helped us to come up with um, the, some of the most interesting findings of the work. So I'm going to give you just a, a, a headline uh, sense of some of the, the key findings that came out of this before we go into the detail uh, from Boston Consulting Group from Andrew Mack. Um, I'll be dipping in as, as we go through that detail, but I think um, it's, it's good to give you a, a sense of where we're going with this. And so, um, just to, to, to frame it, what we've, been, what we've seen in this study is uh, an assessment of the full practical resource within UK waters of these five technologies. And to get an understanding of what that might mean for the industry, what that might mean for Britain, we have elaborated on three scenarios, three deployment scenarios. All of those three scenarios are larger than planned deployments out to 2020. All of those three scenarios are smaller than the full practical resource. And the figures I'll give you here now follow the central scenario. So we are, and so we are looking at the potential under our central scenario for the electricity equivalent of a billion barrels of oil to be generated annually. And that this, in fact, is a near perfect match to the North Sea oil and gas production uh, currently and on average over the last 40 years. And at this level of uh, renewable energy deployment, Britain would be a net electricity exporter. We would be producing as much electricity from offshore renewables as the UK consumes in the year 2050, and uh, we would therefore be a net electricity exporter. Second point on the, the carbon front, um, again, uh, there's been no cooking of numbers here, but a uh, billion seems to keep coming back at us. And uh, the carbon dioxide reductions we would see um, cumulatively in this case between 2010 and 2050 would be 1.1 billion tons. And just finally, there's, there are more headlines to pull out. But again, on this central scenario, we'd be looking at uh, in the order of 145,000 new UK jobs. I'm sure if there's people in the Treasury uh, here in the audience, uh, they'll um, ask us whether those are uh, displacing existing jobs, but we can certainly see that there would be 145,000 uh, jobs needed in this industry. So I think um, I'm going to finish this introduction uh, by just looking at some of the key enablers that have, have come out of the, the study, um, things that will potentially unlock significant future value and crucially keep our options open to unlocking significant future value. It's worth emphasizing that this study um, is not predicting, nor is it prescribing, any of the three scenarios that we have 